My name is Nancy Wehner. I've been a certified professional midwife for about 35 or 40 years. I coined the term VBAC, Vaginal Birth After Cesarean, and wrote the first books on the subject. And I trained student midwives. So, we're talking about circumcision. I can still remember what my son's cry sounded like. As I got to know him as a baby, he had several different cries, but never the cry like the one I heard when I was down the hall and he was in the hospital. We were still in the hospital because I had had a cesarean, a preventable cesarean, by the way, because I then had a vaginal delivery and then I also had a home birth. But I was down the hall and I later found out that the person who did the circumcision, his wife was there, and I wondered why his wife was there. And I heard that the reason that she was with him was the fact that he didn't have a driver's license because he couldn't see well enough. That's all I needed to hear. But mostly it's my son's cry that I can still hear to this day, and my son is just over 50 now. So I became a very strong anti circumcision person from that moment on and I learned from people like Ron Goldman and from Marilyn Milos and a whole variety of people and everything that they said to me made sense and so I did everything that I could to talk the couples who came to me out of cutting their babies I wasn't terribly successful at first later on I became more successful and I'll tell you why in a few minutes um, but I remember Marilyn had a, a bumper sticker that said, you're not dealing with a full dick. And I didn't have the courage to put that on my car. Um, but the thing also that really kind of, you know, cemented this for me was the fact that someone said it would be like cutting your eyelid off of your eye. And I thought, I need my eyelids. And it would seem to me that Men need their foreskin for some reason. I don't think that nature or spirit or God made a mistake when they created a foreskin. And then I found out, obviously, that in Africa and various other places, they did that to women. And it was like clitoridectomies, etc. And everybody thought that was terrible, terrible, terrible. But why don't they think it's terrible when they do it to men? I just, I just didn't understand it. To me, it is now a no-brainer. It's been a no-brainer for a very long time. I know that uh, one man said to me, as many men do, but you want your son to look like you. And I think if you lined up my mother, my sister, and me, we don't look alike. One of us has larger breasts. One of us has smaller breasts. One of us has barely no pubic hair. One of them has dark hair, light hair. We don't look alike. So that argument just didn't cut it for me anymore. <laughs> cut it was a pun, by the way. <laughs> so anyway. Um, so I've become a very strong, you know, intactivist and um, about, oh, it must have been about 12 or 13 years ago as a midwife, I decided that if anybody came here and they were planning to cut their son, that I would no longer be willing to be their midwife. And it surprised me that there, although there are some midwives who say the same thing, many of the midwives said, you know, it's their decision, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if they're Jewish, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I found an organization online called Bruchim, and uh, they are Jews who don't cut their babies, who are committed to Judaism but don't cut their babies. Fabulous organization. So, um, yeah, so that's the way I am these days. I just can't imagine why anybody would cut their son not for any reason whatsoever. And I can still remember my son's little penis looking red and raw, and it must have hurt when he urinated, etc. And I have apologized to him on almost all of his birthdays, and he kept saying to me, Mom, I'm okay, I'm okay, it works, it's fine. <laughs> but I just feel like I owe him a big apology. I was very excited not too long ago when somebody who has six boys and has circumcised the first five of them made the decision not to circumcise her last one. And I felt like we're making some progress. We're making some progress. Thanks to you and a lot of the people like you who understand that this is not just a little thing. This is a really enormous. Um, 
I can't remember who it was. Oh, it was Jody McLaughlin from The Complete Mother who said, when the cutting of the little boys stops, perhaps the violence among the men will stop as well. And I think that is so true. We are violent. We are barbarians from the minute these little baby boys are born. We attack their bodies and it's not okay. It's just, it's just not really okay. Another thing that um, I always thought was interesting is when the women came to me, they were all concerned about an episiotomy, which I've done twice out of 2,600 births. And believe me, in those particular situations, we needed to get this baby out. But otherwise, all of these women with 10-pound babies and 11-pound babies and 9-pound babies, we were patient with them and their babies came out and they were so glad that their bodies were intact. But these same women who were so concerned about whether or not you know I would cut them or they would tear, they were the same women who were thinking that they might cut their babies or that they would cut their babies. And I just couldn't understand that they were more concerned about their own genitalia than, you know, they were about their baby's genitalia. But it was lack of information, lack of education. And so it's really important that uh, we do this kind of a thing because it's not okay. Get very emotional. It's not okay to cut little babies. It is not okay to cut little babies.